There you go. You're okay, ready. so I'm going to stop. There we go. Okay. okay, the first order of business then is the approval of the minutes. Real I'm quick. sorry, Chris. Yeah. Sorry. Real, real quick, I can't see everybody who's on. So is it just Elizabeth, Mike, Mark, and me? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Thank All right, so the first order, first item on the agenda is the minutes from June 9th. Uh, are there any additions, corrections, discussion? I, I did have a question. Now in the minutes it said uh, no vote. So, um, so I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do there because basically according to the, the Roberts rules. Roberts rules, yeah. We're to have a discussion and then right. a motion and a second, but yeah. we all get the vote, so I can't put anything in the box. Yeah. So okay. I can't unanimous or anything. I just have to leave it blank. But then people are probably wondering why are you leaving it blank? You right. know what I? Mean? I don't want. Yeah. I don't want people to think I'm just like omitting. But right. But there wasn't a motion, was there? There wasn't a motion on the table. It's the motions, what? simple stuff. Like we have to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes and then vote right. on, and we have to make a motion to adjourn and vote on that. No, I understand that. Um, but what on page three where you have adjournment and then there's a lot of discussion, um, filling, you know, bringing Mike up to speed on things. So the reference to the adjournment, I mean, the vote, the last item on page four was re related to the adjournment, not to the discussion. Okay. Yeah, I put them because I didn't know where else to put them because that's where they came up in right. the meeting. Yeah. I could no, move I, yeah. if someone wants that to happen. I don't know where else they would go though. Yeah, no, I, I think that's I think that's fine. Um, yeah. to put them in kind of where they came up. Although sometimes we do adjust the agenda if we've got a guest or something. So uh, I don't know, we can hold off on approving the minutes and then- It doesn't matter. Well, I guess, yeah. Um, it's really just a point of discussion, I think. Um, perhaps, and this is just a suggestion, is that instead of having having item 11 be adjournment, it could be commission discussion, just give it a heading like that, and then have adjournment with the, the no vote box. Because reading it as it stands, it looks like there was some motion that didn't get identified, whereas it really relates to the adjournment. So I just moved the heading of adjournment to page four and have the others simply be commission discussion. Yeah, I, I think I, I'll have to double check, but I think there's a pretty set agenda list. Uh, and I'm not sure what the procedure would be to add um, something, to add what you're proposing. Do you want me uh, to just to, vote under there? Um, I could under adjournment say in parentheses, the following discussion is is bringing the, the new commissioner up to speed. And then below that, I can denote for move, I can write, instead of just moved by, I can put adjournment moved by. I have another thought as I look at this, Fran. What about moving that discussion up under unfinished business? Would it fit there? Or new, new business. Yeah, it could go under new business. Because I don't think, well, at some point in time, all of those things that we talked about might have been a, um, might have been new business or, or might have been, yeah, might have been new business at one time. What yeah. about, what about under the uh, numbers, the item six, Roman numerals A, commissioners, could it just go there? Yeah, I think it could. Before the reports? Yeah. Yep. All right. 
but getting back to the approval, essentially the minutes that we're reviewing shows that we didn't really approve the minutes from the from the meeting because it says there's no vote. And I think that's but the point that I was trying to raise. But if there's not a vote, I can't say there was. No, I no, I, I, I understand, yeah. So- I didn't say that, you know? Right, yeah. So do we not approve the minutes and then in September, we make a motion to approve the June meeting minutes and the July meeting minutes. It's up to you. If you want to do it that way, I think it's fine. Well, otherwise, it, otherwise we're not, otherwise we're not, we haven't approved. It reads like we never approved the minutes from the previous meeting because there was no vote. So the, the next meeting we have, we need to approve the minutes from May. Yeah. And then the minutes from June as amended. E, yes. And then the minutes from today's meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So May. So that, that meeting will be in September, Mark. Do we meet yeah. in August? Um, well, Right now, we're not scheduled to, uh, but Mike sent me an email earlier today with a suggestion, and, and I actually thought it was a pretty good one. Um, and I don't know, Mike, do you want to um, throw out what was suggested? And I, I did reply back, and so I'm not sure what yeah, sure. your thoughts on that are. Yeah, so I, I had suggested originally to Mark, hey, maybe um, each meeting we have, we pick a like a local park or a site that um it's sorry if it's loud i'm in south carolina today it's like raining like crazy here so um and and maybe we pick a site like a different park or area like parts of rack and we have the meeting there um and it really lets us see maybe we choose sites that are upcoming for projects or different things so we can really see kind of what's going on in the community um market today maybe we do that or maybe we take the next meeting which we didn't have a thing scheduled in august and get a, a maybe one of the town vans or buses and and go around to the four or five, some number of sites that we're planning projects at, kind of do a, a you know, really let's 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 touch the community and see what's there. So that was kind of the suggestion, different options, how to execute it if we choose, um, whether we do it every meeting or we do a one-time like swing around, but I think that's options on the table. Yeah, so what I had suggested is perhaps because we don't have anything scheduled for August, is that we schedule a special meeting and it would be dedicated just to driving around and uh, as Mike suggested, uh, you know, becoming a little more familiar with some of the different parts. So we certainly couldn't hit them all, but we could, uh, as Mike suggested, uh, you know, hit the, the, the parks that we're talking about doing projects at and then maybe look at a few others, you know, spend an hour, an hour and a half, um, just kind of driving around and I, I could set up, you know, have the van set up so that we could have a driver and we could all chat while, um, you know, and get out and walk around quickly if we wanted or, or just do a drive by and ask questions, you know, commissioners can ask questions or, or whatever. So I don't know what the rest of the commission thinks about that. I actually thought it was a good idea. I do too. I think it's a great idea. There, um, I'm thinking of all of the work that needs to be done at Sutton Park, for example. Yeah. yeah. Get to, you know, and I certainly had my eyes open the few nights I was at the community center. So I think that's a very good idea. Yeah. Now that would be in lieu of having a meeting like this. Yes. Yeah. Or would I mean, that uh, the meeting on the town's documentation and schedule. Oh yeah, no, it would have to be on the schedule anytime. Uh, a quorum gets together that represents a commission or whatever it has to get posted and um, but yeah the only thing that would be on the agenda would be a, a tour like what we did um, on the property off Flanders Road yes yeah we had a special meeting and yeah the only item on the agenda was a tour uh, of the Flanders Road property Um, so I guess we should put that to a vote because um, it is a change of schedule and venue. So do I have a motion to um, that effect? Do we know that date? That um, format and oh, the date. 
Yeah, I, I know I'm on vacation August 7th to the 14th. And right now that's the only thing I have scheduled for the summer. Just looking. Um, ordinarily we'd be meeting on the, what, the second Thursday, right? Uh, yeah, sure. which would be August would 11. Be? Yeah, I'll be out of town. Okay. Um, how's August 18th? It, that works for me, Mike. It does work for you, Mike? Yes. Okay. How about, how about you, Fran? You know, if that works for I you? I really don't know. I'm, I'm keeping my own flexible because of things going on in my world. Sure. But, but like, I'm going to promise yes, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. Do you have any idea if Dom's going to be away in August? You know, I, I don't know his schedule. I'll see if I can find out. Uh, I know when he goes, he goes for a while. So maybe we don't set a date right now. All right, so maybe the motion should be that we will have a special meeting in August date to be determined uh, as an opportunity to tour some key areas of the Parks and Recreation sure. Department. Yep, that, that's fine. I would second that motion and I think you just, um, you know, as, as time goes, maybe we just do an email coordination for selecting the date whenever it's available and that, that comes to the official head or however, however that works, but I, I'd second the motion for that, you know, having that type of meeting. So before our, did you officially make a motion there, Elizabeth? Yeah, I think it did turn into a motion. <laughs> okay, where does this going under? Is this going under new business? Um, or we could do it under commissioners because okay. it was Mike's, Mike's suggestion. Yep, very good, yeah. Okay, so we're making a motion to have August an August meeting to or tour tour around. parks and recreation facilities. Or, and is that outdoors or like is it facilities like we're actually going to tour the insides of places or is this mainly for the parks for outdoors? No, I think the idea was uh, and Mike, please step in if I'm not. I think the idea was uh, outdoor parks. That, that was my concept. I don't know what indoor facilities we have, but the, the idea yeah. was outdoor parks. That was kind of my, yeah. my concept for now. But I mean, I mean we, open we for a minute. <laughs> at some point we could hold a, a meeting in the community center. Yeah, we can do yeah. that in the winter. I think. Right. Take yeah, a look. Uh, go ahead. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, in the winter, we choose one, and when the in person goes to one of the in inside meetings, right, nice and warm, and you do that, just make the venue yeah. change with the same same agenda. Okay, so I guess we really should have a vote for the record. Those in yes. favor, aye. Was there a second? Oh, yeah. did Mike second? Michael it? Second, okay. yeah. All right. Fran? Oh, sorry. Am I muted? Yeah. No, I just wanted to know if you were yes or no. <laughs> oh, yeah. that. I don't know if I can make it, but I like the Understood. Concept. But just so that we have a vote on this one. Mm -hmm. All right. So the motion <laughs> back. Thanks. <Okay>. You. <laughs> and then as far as the approval of minutes, we just to circle back for a minute. We'll be looking at May and June and July when we have our next formal meeting, which will be in September. Is it May, June, and July or just July? Yeah, because May no, was the one we did vote on. I thought we voted on the May minutes at the June meeting. I'm looking at the June minutes and under approval of minutes, there was no vote. Oh, that's right. It was the May minutes we voted on then. Sorry. Right. Yep. Yeah. Right. So the September meeting, we will be voting on May, June, and July. Yep. I'm just writing that down. Oh, if 
our August meeting is official. We'll be voting on that then too, right? Do I, I if we have an official meeting, I have to keep minutes for you. Yes. Yeah, in August is. That's assuming we can pull it together, you know, try and get the calendars synced right. up. Yeah. Okay. Is Thursday Thursday night work the best for everybody? Works well for me. Okay. Mike? Yeah. I'm I'm open Thursday's good. And Monday is not a good day, but any other day can I I can really make work if we have a Okay. Course. All right. Okay, are we ready to move on to the next agenda item? Citizen petitions and comments, anything? I take that as a no. Uh, we'll no. Move, we'll move on to town council referrals. Have there been any, Mark? No. Okay. Correspondence and communications, any received? No on my end. No. Okay. Nor me. Mark, nothing. No. Commissioners, we have talked about Mike's uh, idea, and that's all taken care of. Anything from you, Francis? No, not right now. Okay. I don't have anything either. And Dom hasn't passed anything on to you, Mark? No. Okay. So that brings us to your report, Mark. Okay, so just to give the commission uh, an update, you'll recall, I don't remember how many months ago, but the commission drafted a letter to go to the council, encouraging the council adopt a, um, adopt a no smoking yes. policy. And um, I believe that that, uh, the council is going to be moving forward with some type of um, action on no smoking. I think, I don't know if everyone saw it, but the, the town of Stonington recently, they uh, recently passed something, uh, no smoking, vaping, using tobacco products in their parks. And I, I think that prompted the uh, Councilors in, in Groton to um, the planning on taking action. So, oh, good. I just kind of want to update everybody on that because we had sent the you had sent a letter and then didn't really hear anything and and it's been a few months now. Um, mm. So hopefully that will um, get kick started again. Uh, I attended a bike Groton meeting. Actually, I guess. I think it might have been Monday night. Uh, they have to date raised fifty-five thousand dollars towards the pump track. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's going well. They did submit an application uh, for ARPA funds, uh, and that I think the timeline for that is it, it, it's under review by the there's an ARPA committee, and then it goes to the council, and I think. The council sometime in August or September will be reviewing and either approving or accepting and rejecting various ARPA applications. But um, hopefully if they get it, uh, we'll have enough money to probably start the project next spring. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yep. How much money uh, did they raised so far? 55000 Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and all of the most of the donations have, um, with the exception of maybe one or two, have been, you know, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. They've had very few large donations. I, I think the largest one might have been five thousand. So, um, the Parks and Recreation Department received a grant from the state of Connecticut, uh, uh, summer camp enrichment for $65,000 um, and we're using that money to make camp more available and more affordable to those families that uh, struggle. Um, we're also using that money 
uh, and these were all within the guidelines of the of the grant um, for trips. Uh, so you know, kids that maybe couldn't afford a particular trip, uh, now we're making that money available so that they can they can go on some of those trips rather than having to to not go to a water park or something like that. Um, we also received ninety thousand dollars from NRPA to become a health and wellness hub. Um, uh, this the ninety thousand dollars is for the next eighteen months. Uh, this was a an application that the staff worked on in collaboration with Lead Light, Ledge Light Health District, um, CC TVA, um, and a, various other organ, organizations committed to uh, providing uh, health resources to underserved families. Uh, and we met today with the HR director to talk about creating a job description and hopefully we'll have somebody on board early fall uh, to be the coordinator. It would be held at the community center. Uh, and you know the idea is we're going to work with all these other organizations to uh, provide opportunities for families to come in and learn about and gain access to services that they might not be aware of or might not be able to uh, necessarily be a part of. Um, oh, the other partner was the Health Improvement Collaborative, which is a, a, a broad group of organizations that are committed to um, equitable availability of, of health services, mental health, uh, food programs, and things like that. Uh, let's see. Out at the golf course, we just hosted the Connecticut Senior Open. This was the 25th year mm. that the Shinnecosset has hosted it. We had uh, 156 players from 12 states. Oh. And the gentleman that won the tournament on Tuesday was from California. Mm. And he's been here for about a week. So this is... Uh, in some instances, this uh, helps benefit the uh, local economy. Uh, he's renting a B and B in, in Mystic, and he came here last year, played in the tournament. Really, he and his wife, I don't think, had ever been to this part of this, the country, and they said they were really, really had a great time and wanted to come back. And he came back and won the tournament, and hopes to come back next year. He has to defend his title. Exactly. Yeah, and it, um, it it's a real it benefits the the golf course in a number of different ways. Um, there are players that come from well all over, and they get the opportunity to uh, experience a Donald Ross course. Uh, the the golf course staff two weeks prior are you know, working diligently to put the course in the in the best shape that it can be. And, and that's, uh, I was out there Monday and Tuesday for a little while. And that's what I kept hearing from the players is they couldn't believe how good the course, how good in shape the course was. Um, in fact, you know, some players say that they're going back to their private club and they're gonna ask their groundskeeper why the greens at a municipal course are better than you know their private course, um, hey. <laughs> and we also get a we also get a bump in play because players know that the course is in better sh is in tip top shape. Uh, so players try to get there, play a few days before the tournament, and then they like to play a few days right after the tournament. So we get a a bump in play um, there also. So it's a real it's a a real positive for the for the golf course. Oh, it sounds terrific. Yeah, That's and we got a really nice plaque um, with an aerial shot of the golf course and celebrating the fact that we've hosted it for 25 years. That's terrific. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I kind of jumped ahead. Uh, I can go down to the Trails Coordinating Task Force. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't had a meeting that meets quarterly. Uh, we did submit, the department did submit an, uh, an ARPA application in collaboration with uh, GOSA, Avalonia, and Tritown Trails. And the proposal is to hire uh, a consultant that can work with all of the different groups that manage land where there's trails on. And the goal is to try to set up a, a, a unified kind of consolidated uh, trail marking system that is would be recognizable across all of the, the different land management groups. Right now, everybody kind of has their own. And the thought was, if there's kind of a standardized sign system throughout all of the different land management groups, it would just make it easier for uh, hikers to kind of increase their comfort level so that they know, okay, well, you know, the same symbol here means the same symbol on that trail and, and kind of come up with a, uh, a, a unilateral logo that um, across all of the different groups. So with so many of the trails intersecting and the properties intersecting, it just seems to make sense to me to have unified Trails yeah, there. there's there's a lot of properties that you know abut each other. I mean, the, the crosstown trail is a perfect example. You know, it crosses uh, four different uh, land management groups. So you know, as you're going from one to another, consistency and signage across all of those would be beneficial. So I mean, we'll have to see. It would be best too if it was something that would be recognizable even between different states not just the same throughout our system, but there, there are some systems that are kind of universal already, like the Boy Scout system, that kind of thing. Oh, um, right, right. Yeah. It, it makes sure one that would be easily recognized in other areas too, maybe do some research into that, that would be good. Yes, and, that, and that's why we would hire a, a branding consultant. Uh, and, the, and the other idea was also to try to, e even though we want, to kind of come up with a singular logo. Perhaps the logo could have some color variations that reflected the different organizations. So fundamentally, you've got the same symbol or logo, but the, there may be color variations to reflect, okay, well, when we get into Avalonia, we still have the same logo, but the colors are a little bit different to reflect the fact that it's Avalonia property, and then you get into Gosa property, you've got the same symbol, but the colors are more in line with their current color system. Um, so anyway, that was the proposal, and we should, I guess, find out in September if we um, if we got that money. Uh, the athletic fields task force, they have not met in a few months right now. There's uh, a camp, a camp campaign going on. Um, the town is soliciting input from residents uh, through the Greater Groton website. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, I think on Friday is the last day it's going to be up and people can submit feedback. Uh, and then once that closes, the consultant that they've hired is going to kind of pull all that information together and share it with the council as to what people identified um, as their top uses for the Calvin, or not Calvin, for the Clodchester property. So hopefully we'll be seeing something, I'm guessing the early to mid part of August. Uh, and then, um, you know, that would be presented to the council and the goal was to get the council to take action on how they wanted that property to be used. And then depending on what they decide, um, the athletic field task force can kind of move forward with the next phase of the, uh, of the project, and that would be coming up with kind of site-specific plans based on the feedback. You know, if the council, if the public has said, yes, we think the top priority is more fields, the council 
agrees, then the Athletic Fields Task Force and the consultant can kind of move forward with more detailed plans of the athletic fields. Mark, do you have a sense of whether or not the plan is to demolish the school building itself? I would think so, uh, especially what we've seen in the past is when you close a building down, it, it deteriorates pretty quickly, particularly on the inside. Um, mm -hmm. we, we saw that with the, uh, well, in fact, probably three weeks after SB Butler was closed down, you, you could walk in and the, the smell of mold just overtook you. And wow. so the school has been closed for almost a year now. I think mm. it will be a year in September. So I can't imagine what that would be like on the inside. But I guess I'm kind of glad to hear that. I think holding on to too many of these buildings is not prudent. Yeah, and I'm not really sure what, you know, holding on to another 60-year-old, 70-year-old building. Uh, <laughs> we've done that more often than I'd like to think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Agency accreditation. So big news. Um, we were able to twist Elizabeth's arm. Uh, <laughs> into, and I'm not really sure, Elizabeth, what we want to call you, uh, but Elizabeth is volunteer to help us through the next nine months or so with agency accreditation. She has uh, a background in accreditation and um, is going to help us get organized um, and put together the best application that we can. Well, I am doing my best. Yes. Yeah. So we launch Monday. That's yes. awesome. Yes, thank you. Glad to do it. Yeah. It was, just, it was so frustrating to listen to the uh, reviewers who had nothing but praise for the department and still not be able to complete the accreditation process because of the, the application rec you know, requirements. And so if I can help get that spiffed up and, and that'll be good. And she's off to a great start. I think the day after um, Jerry and I met with Elizabeth, she submitted a calendar for July. And the day after that had a calendar for the next nine months and what she wanted to accomplish. So um, we're, she certainly has set the buy bar pretty high. So we're expecting great things. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we're, we're looking at a uh, submission at the end of February. Yes. Yeah. Good. All right. Any questions for Mark before we go on? An unfinished business. We have the Shanacasa rules and regulations and rates. We got yes. the new thing sheet. Yes. So the reason that this is back up on the agenda is when we went to the council, uh, one of the counselors uh, questioned, encouraged us to look, to review the rates and come see what we could do for active or retired uh, veterans. And so we, uh, I met with the golf pro and the um, superintendent and we put forth a proposal to the golf advisory board last month. The golf advisory board made recommendations uh, to go to the Parks and Rec Commission, and those are highlighted in yellow. So we now have a, an adult veteran rate, uh, a family with veteran rate, and then uh, just a veteran rate um, under the limited category. And what we, the basis for these, the, the pricing that you see 
is uh, for daily fees, the veteran rate is 10% uh, less than the kind of the rack car, the, the off, off the street rate. So we applied that because we have been doing that as a past practice, we applied that same rate to uh, active and retired veterans. So we applied a 10% a discount um, to those three different, so those three different categories. So what you're saying is the guest fee is the daily, is the guest fee is what you're talking about. Yeah, so the daily, yeah. and that's okay. a that's a fee that we've had for a while. The guest fee, right. uh, you know, veterans pay the guest fee versus the daily fee, and that's essentially a five, uh, ten percent discount. Mm -hmm. So we applied that same kind of model to the memberships in in different areas. There's no um, discount for the cart rate. No, that was not anything that they um, they discussed. Um, yeah. I just wanted to make sure it hadn't been inadvertently admitted. Yeah, no. Oh. As a as a member, um, you don't have to pay for a cart. Uh, that kind of comes with the with the membership. Mm -hmm. I have one recommendation, Mark, because this applies to both active and retired military. So yes. The rate should probably not be adult veteran, but adult military. Oh, okay. And family yeah, with can... military and military uh, for the limited, it'd be a military personnel rate. Yeah, okay. But as far as the discount goes, I think that that's excellent. We'll see if it has an impact. Yeah, we so we when this was originally suggested back just at the start of the golf season, we actually changed our membership application and added a question whether somebody was uh, active or retired military. So we kept track of um, how many answered that question uh, in the affirmative. And I think out of the 354 memberships that we have right now, 16 uh, said that they were either active or retired military. Just to give okay. you a sense, just to give you a sense of the scope uh, of the, uh, the number of members that this would impact. I was just thinking that by offering this, we may attract more from the military community. We could. Yeah. yeah. And, and earlier this year, we were actually pushing the fact that we had a, a military rate. We did that right around just before and just after Memorial Day. Oh, that's appropriate timing. So am I correct in your, it, Elizabeth made the suggestion to switch the term from veteran to military? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we'd actually, I think in this case, need a motion from the Parks and Rec Commission because our next step is to go to the council. Well, I make a motion that we accept the um, rates for military, active, and retired uh, that have been put forth by the Golf Advisory Committee. The amendment of the wording. I could, With the amendment of the wording. Yes. On the rate sheet. Yep. Yep. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion is passed. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, new business, is there any? No, I haven't. Mike, Francis? Nothing. Uh, Same okay. thing, nothing. All right. Well, then our next regular meeting will be on September 8th at 7 o'clock. I assume we'll still be in Zoom mode. 
That's entirely up to the commission. I think for the time being, it seems to work for people. Okay. So I'll look, I will entertain a motion to adjourn if there's nothing further. I'll make the motion. Thank you. I'll second it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned at 7.45. Terrific. All right. Thank you all, and um, we'll be in touch about August. Okay, how do you, you're going to do that by email, do you think, Mark? How do you want to yes. solicit the date? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it sounds like Fran's schedule could be kind of fluid through the summer, so. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get a hold of Dom and see if he's available on the 17th, and, and then... Um, Go from there, and if he is, then I'll I'll set it up for that date. All right. Fran, when do you go back? I, I hate to say this, but when do you go back to school? Sorry. Um, <laughs> we start August twenty fifth or whatever time, um, right after whatever weekend. If it's the weekend, I don't know twenty fifth. Okay. All right. Well, Students don't start. Then, but I'm okay. Sorry, I felt like I was saying a four-letter word there, back to school. <laughs> <laughs> they are back to school posted in the store. Crazy. Oh, yeah, I saw something on TV where they're already collecting backpacks. Like, good yeah. heavens. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Enjoy the summer, guys. Yes, yep. thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, all.